In Creo Parametric, the Thicken command allows you to add thickness to a quilt in order to add or remove material from your model. Let's take a look at how to use it. Here I am in a part model. It contains a quilt surface. If I want to select it, I can move my mouse over the model. Right now it is selecting an individual surface patch. If I tap the right mouse button, I can get the entire quilt to highlight. That's one way to pick it. If you have a little difficulty using the right mouse button, you can always go to your selection filter in the lower right hand corner and change it from the default geometry to quilt. And that way with one left mouse click, you can get the quilt that you want. And then to use the thicken command, it appears in your mini toolbar. But if you don't see it, you can always use it from the editing group in the model tab of the ribbon. So I will click on the command. And here you can see a preview of the geometry. If we take a look in the graphics area, there is an arrow that you can use to flip the direction of the thickness from inside to outside the material. Also, you have a drag handle that you can use to change the amount of the thickness. And if you move it to the outside, it will also change the direction. One thing to be aware of, with the default option for the thickness, which is normal to surface, it depends on the minimum inside radius that you're able to thicken it. So you'll notice that as I start getting over a certain value, the preview stops updating, but when I get below a value, then the preview updates once more. Also in the graphics area, you have a dimension that you can double click on in order to enter in an exact numeric value. Before we go into more details about the dashboard, I want to talk about how you can determine how much thickness you can add to a model. I'm going to cancel out of the thicken command. Yes, I do want to cancel. And I'm going to go to the analysis tab. And there are a few different commands that we can use on here. Probably the one that is the most useful, I find, is the radius command. When you choose the radius command, it will show you the minimum and maximum radius of the geometry. It shows that's the inside and outside radius. And right now it's pointing essentially to the outside of the model, but it tells me that the minimum inside radius is negative 146 and some change, and the minimum outside radius is four and some change. You can change the plot instead of showing inside and outside. In this case, if I wanted to figure out, hey, what's the maximum I can do to really the inside, but it says the outside over here, four and some change. So let's say that you're doing a thickness analysis. You're like, hey, what it's saying is the inside and the outside. Those are actually the opposite of what I want. Well, sometimes when you create your geometry, your surface normals end up in the wrong direction. If you want to figure out what direction your surface normals are, you can do that from the curvature command in the inspect geometry group on the analysis tab. Before I click on the geometry to analyze, I'm going to change the plot from curvature. Actually, right now it doesn't have the options that I want. Let me select geometry first. I'm going to tap the right mouse button again to get the quilt selected. And now that I have a quilt selected, I can change the plot. By default, it's set to curvature. You can change it to surface normals. And I can see that the surface normals are actually pointing to the inside of the model. So in this particular situation, my normals are in the wrong direction. If you want to change the direction of your normals, well, you can select the quilt and then go to the editing overflow menu. And here we have the flip normal command. And at the bottom of the model tree, you will now notice that there is a flip normal feature. No dashboard opened up, no dialog box opened up. It just flipped the normal direction of the surface or quilt that you have highlighted. Now, if I go back to the analysis tab and then I go to inspect geometry and radius, then I will move my mouse over the model and tap right to get the quilt. Well, now it's showing me that the maximum outside radius is 146 and some change. 
let's change the plot drop down list to inside and I can see that okay to the inside roughly about 4.66 that's the maximum I will be able to thicken to the inside using the regular normal to surface option for the thickness I'll talk more about those different options later on let me click OK out of that command Another tool that you can use to figure out the maximum amount of thickness that you can use is the offset analysis. And once again, I will tap right to select the quilt and you have a little drag handle You can drag it to the outside and you can see a preview of the surface that would be created at that distance, dragging it to the inside. And when you're using the offset analysis command, if you go to too big a value, you can see where the mesh starts folding in on itself or crossing over itself in different locations. So that's an indication of where exactly you would have problems. Oh wait, here it looks like. This is where you would have problems if you're trying to offset or create a thickness using the offset to surface option. And with the offset analysis, you can change the number of lines that you have in the mesh and the quality of it. And also, if you want to save this as an analysis that you can have persistent display, you can do that as well. But let's get out of here. I just wanted to show a couple of tools for figuring out how much you can thicken this model. Let's go back to the model tab. I will select the quilt. Let's choose thicken. And I'm going to flip it to the inside and let's say I wanted to use a thickness of a value of two enter the value that's good or maybe even a bigger value for hey we're still fine with that value because we're below that inside radius all right let's hit the check mark and in that way we've added solid material to this model by using a quilt here is another example of a quilt with some more regular shapes that I have merged together into a single surface. Let's take a look at adding thickness to this. So I will tap right to select the quilt and then I can use the thicken command. You can see a preview of the thickness, but you can see that we're ending up with really weird geometry around these little channels over here. And again, I can grab the thickness. You can see that the preview is not updating, indicating that there's an issue with going to a value this big. I can drag it to the outside and we're good up to, looks like you can see almost the value where it gets too big, right around one or so. But let's say that I wanted to go to the inside a certain distance, but I realized that there are some issues with these small channels over here if I wanted to add the thickness around them we can go to the options tab and you have a collector for excluding certain surfaces from the thicken operation also if you hold down the right mouse button you can activate the exclude surfaces collector you'll notice that the color changed here and then I can pick this surface from the operation to exclude it and hold down the control key and select that one and now we're getting a more accurate preview that's updating let's drag it even more and you can see how the thickness is being added to the model and we can go to a much higher value by excluding the problematic areas one thing to notice you'll want to take a look at the geometry so for example around here where I excluded the geometry it's creating sort of like a curved sloped surface over there around where it enters sort of the rectangular channel but that is how you are able to use the exclude surfaces if you want to go to a much bigger thickness than is possible with normal to surface let's hit the check mark and take a look at a, another example here I have a, another part and I've got a quilt over here. Once again, I will tap right to select the entire quilt and then I can execute the thicken command from the mini toolbar. And right now we're getting a thickness to the outside. 
we can flip the direction to go to the inside and I can double click on the number to change the value making it a really big thickness over here and let's zoom in a little bit right now we are having material added to the model but since we already have geometry in our part and we have our thickened quilt intersecting with it rather than filling with solid material we can choose to remove material to show you a few other things from the dashboard you can also enter in the value here instead of doing it in the graphics area you also have a flip button for toggling between being on the outside being on the inside or being split about the inside and the outside if i go to the body options tab oh yeah one other thing to mention about that this is a three-way flip button as opposed to the arrow on the screen on the screen i can change it from inside to outside but with this particular arrow over here i actually have three different settings where i can be inside outside or split on both sides of the quilt let me change back to the inside and also you have a body options tab and in this particular situation since i am removing material from the model i can choose which body is going to be affected you can select all if you have multiple bodies or you could choose selected if you wanted to affect one certain body if i change this back to fill with solid material rather than having this be added to body one by default you could choose to create a brand new body in the model but i'm going to change this back to removing material from body one i'm happy with that let's hit the check mark in order to complete the feature and in that way we've used the quilt to cut away material from our part let's take a look at some other options that you have available to you so again i have a quilt in my model let me tap right to select the entire thing and then choose to thicken it and right now i am thickening to the outside that's fine let's change this to a value of one and i can pretty much go probably like out to infinity with the thickness based on the prismatic geometry that i have in this part let's take a look at the options tab the default geometry creation method is normal to surface so in other words when it creates the geometry it's going to be normal at every location along the surface if you go to the drop down list you've got two other additional options over here controlled fit and automatic fit so if you have a situation where you're trying to offset a distance greater than the minimum radius well you can choose controlled fit and in that way creole parametric will find a way to thicken to the value that you specify by altering the geometry. In that particular situation, you're giving Creole Parametric some other additional controls. Let me show you an example in the first model of this. Okay, back over to this part. Let's go to the thicken command and I'm going to edit definition. Unless I try to go bigger than that 4.66 value to the inside, let's change this to a value of eight to the inside and then if i try to hit the check mark you'll notice i get this warning over here and this is the define special handling dialog box it's telling me that the feature cannot be created as defined do you want to create the feature successfully using the recommended special handling definition and it says the affected surfaces are highlighted Eh, don't really see which ones they are highlighting over there but let's click the yes button and in this particular situation some of the surfaces were not included in the thicken operation so now if we go back to the thicken feature and edit definition and then click on the options tab you'll notice that creo parametric automatically excluded certain surfaces from the thicken operation this is the special handling it was talking about. I'm going to right click and remove all these different surfaces and then change the geometry creation option from the default normal to surface to automatic fit. 
And now Creo Parametric did some thinking and figured out a way in which it could offset to the value that I specified and still make the geometry even though that we're going to a thickness greater than the minimum inside radius. And if I hit the check mark, you can see that Creo Parametric took a number of different liberties in terms of how it offset the different surfaces in order to form the geometry. Again, when you're using this automatic fit, you're giving Creo Parametric a number of different controls. Instead of using the automatic fit, if you edit definition, we can go to the options tab and change from automatic fit to controlled fit. This is going to require the specification of a coordinate system. It's using the parts default coordinate system. And right now it's allowing translation in X, Y, and Z relative to that coordinate system. I will hit the check mark. So here we ended up with a different result for being able to thicken to the value greater than the minimum inside radius. Let me jump back over to that previous part in order to talk a little bit more about that controlled fit. All right, so we've got the quilt again. I'm going to select it and then go to the thicken command and let's go to a value that's big enough to see. Oh, let me change this to a value of two to the outside and from the options tab. Again, we're going normal to surface over here, but instead I will use a controlled fit and it's using the default coordinate system and it's allowing translation in X, Y, or Z. You'll notice that we end up with different geometry than if we were just doing normal to the surface at every location. You'll notice that the side surfaces are a bit angled in the model. And how they're angled depends on this coordinate system. And I'm going to give you a warning. In my career, I've actually never had a use case for the controlled fit. Also, I'll admit, I don't have a complete understanding of how the translation works relative to the coordinate system. But let's take a look at a few examples. So again, right now we're using the default coordinate system, which is located coplanar with essentially the original top of the quilt. Right now we're allowing translation in X, Y, or Z. If I deselect Y and Z, it actually changes the shape. So right now it's just allowing translation in the X direction for the surface that's created. Let me then just go to Y and change it a little bit. Y is in the upwards direction. If I go to just the Z direction, I think it ends up looking a lot like translation in just the X direction. And you can try different pairs of these. So for example, if I go to X and Y, you can see the resulting geometry. If I go to Y and Z, might be slightly different. And then you can try X and Z. So you can do the different combinations of X, Y, and Z to see the resulting geometry if you do a controlled fit. Also, which coordinate system has an effect on the resulting geometry? So instead of using the default coordinate system located here, hey, let's change to CS1, and you'll notice how the direction of the surface has changed. Let me choose X, Y, and Z. Hey changed again. If we go just to X, you can see the result and you can see how the geometry was changing as I was selecting and deselecting different options in the dialog box. And we can try a couple of these selected together and see the end result of it. And let's try another coordinate system. So again, you can play around with this. I got to warn you again, I, I've never had cause to use this, but this is one thing that maybe you want to keep in your back pocket in case it's something that you might ever have to use one day. But that again is how you can use the thicken command in order to use a quilt to add or remove material from your model. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, 
please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.